I bet you guys didn't know this, but I really like Hannibal Rao. I like that kid. I like that kid. What about the, uh, you know, in the co main event? Are you, I know you're a guy that likes to follow the, the odds a little bit and see how it lays, plays out. I mean, massive, massive favorite. Yeah. Does that, does that make um, sense to you? Well, we've seen over the last couple fights, odds don't mean shit. Odds mean nothing. Um, you know, people have been counting Dan Henderson out for a long time now. And, and I'd lie if I said I didn't either. And I'm sure most of you did too. Um, but he's got that one thing, that right hand is the equalizer. And it can, it can change a fight in a minute, just like it did the Shogun fight. What kind of implications are you putting on the Jake Ellenberger, Robbie Lawler fight? Um, well, obviously a lot, I mean, a lot of people think Robbie Lawler won that fight. Um, I think he didn't, I think he was real close. Um, so it'd be tough to say if, if, uh, Ellenberger win, wins, he wouldn't be, wouldn't be next in line or close. <clears throat> when you look at the whole picture with Tyron Woodley and Rory McDonald fighting next at UFC 174, where do they stack up? Uh, yeah, I, listen, I, I mean, the, the only way to, to say it is that division's never been more exciting. The division's full of killers and, uh, and a lot of fun fights coming up. And as soon as Johnny Hendricks is ready to go, which should be soon, uh, he can start training again real soon. Um, we'll figure it out. Have you really had an update from him as a specific targeted time from yeah, Johnny? I was with his manager the other night, and, and he's doing he's doing really well, really well. He's, he's going to start working out again soon. Look at this uh, as being a, a good stage for Barrow. I mean, finally get uh, maybe uh, more recognition than he's had. Yeah, I think that you know, Hannah Barrow is one of these guys, much like Anderson Silva. We forget nobody was talking about Anderson Silva either, and, and Anderson Silva wasn't being called all the great things that he's called today. It, it took a long time. It took a long time for Chuck Liddell. You know, these things don't happen overnight. There's some guys who burst onto the scene overnight, like a Conor McGregor or, you know, but uh, other guys take longer. I mean, when you look at the numbers and you look at Hennon Burrell's fights, it's all there. I mean, he, he's the kind of guy that I like to watch. He's, he's a killer. He comes in and, and tries to finish you. There's a specific number when it comes to Burrell that you're most impressed with? I mean, 22 fight winning streak. Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. It's like 35 straight fights. Uh, he, he hasn't lost in almost 10 years. Never been taken down in the UFC. His finish rate in those 35 fights was 70%. His finish rate as a champion is 100%. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very impressive. A lot of people say, is it the weight class? Is it? Maybe he should learn English like they told Canelo I've when he was coming I've heard every stupid thing you could possibly Maybe. hear. I hear he's not handsome enough. I hear he doesn't speak English. I hear he doesn't. Listen, if you're showing up to see handsome guys speak on Saturday, you're coming to the wrong fucking show. Okay? <sighs> it is a question about Henan Burrell speaking English. And I'm only asking this question because for his future and for greater stardom and crossover stardom it's it had, you know Manny Pacquiao learning English helped him when Anderson spoke more in English it gave him more fans without being facetious about your last answer you know it could be important to him to become more Anderson Silva got stardom. more fans when he kicked Vitor in the face that's when he got more fans if he didn't speak English from that day to today which he really hasn't how much English has Anderson Silva really speak I back everybody I back I mean that, that's that, that's that's a that's a sentence in English for Anderson Silva um, he, at the end of the day, it's great when you have a guy like a Chael Sonnen, who's not only can speak, but he's entertaining, and he's, you know, that guy can actually go out and host television shows. He has a bright future in television. This is the fight business. The reality of having a ton of guys like that, it's not a reality at all. But in that, you mentioned Chael there, and in many ways, Chael you was You know what the, I love about, about uh, there's many things that I love about Hannah Burrell, but when, I, when you look at somebody like me, I'm like a hardcore fight fan. I like the guys, and I like guys who go out and try to finish. I like guys who go out and, and, and do what Hannah Burrell does. And, and this, you know, I saw some stuff uh, on Twitter where, uh, you know, people were saying, <laughs> you know, Hannah Burrell uh, doesn't make enough money. He was washing his clothes in a sink. On the uh, on the show, we we did a really bad job at setting that thing up and what that was really all about. Um, it was almost like when you saw the uh, the prime time where Cain Velasquez was mopping the floors at the gym. You know, Hennon Burrell says he has this Spartan the Spartan mentality where uh, he doesn't want anything to be easy. He wants everything to be hard. He doesn't care if he's the champion or not. He washes his own clothes when he's on camp. There's nothing. Uh, there's no frills. 
in, in his camp but before he was the champion and now that he still is the champion. It's not a money issue, it's a mindset issue. When you mentioned Chael there, um, what I was going to go on to say was, in a sense, he was the perfect foil for Anderson to cross over and become a bigger star, wasn't he? Do you think Dillashaw, with his style, could be that kind of thing for Barrow? Or are we waiting for someone to have a trilogy with him? Could it be when Dominic Cruz returns? Is it, you know... Who knows? I, I mean, here's the reality. Uh, the reality is a lot of people are writing Dillashaw off, which is a bad idea. He, he, he's a tough kid. He's very well-rounded. And Again, going back to the numbers, I don't know the exact stats, but it's something like this. Significant strikes per minute. <clears throat> Hen and Burrell. Hen and Burrell is at something like uh, 3.7 significant strikes per minute. The average in the UFC is 2.61. Dillashaw has the record in WEC and UFC for most significant strikes per minute. His is like 4.8. And it's even more impressive on the ground. 40% of his damage is done on the ground. Um, I mean, when you put the numbers together... It's, it becomes one of the, this is one of those fights that's going to be a war. It's going to be all about whose chin's going to hold up in this fight. Final question for me, final question on, on Henan Burrell. Why, what's your answer to people who are saying that he's not paid enough at the moment? What Which guy is paid enough in the UFC right now? Other than me. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but a lot of people are saying That's that. what everybody what's says. Your Mind your fucking business. Worry yeah. about your own money. Worry about what you're making every day. You know what I mean? When Henan Burrell, Henan Burrell is doing just fine. You know, um, on, on one hand, I got people saying Hannon Burrell isn't a draw. Nobody gives a shit about him. Maybe it's because he's not handsome enough. Maybe because he doesn't speak English. Maybe because he's a lighter weight class. Yet he's not being paid enough. Which one is it? Well, if he's none of these things and he's not a star, then why should he be paid more money? If he is all of these things and, and he is a star, then he's going to make what he's supposed to make. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, the guys, <clears throat> the guys who bring in... Uh, the guys who bring in the tickets, the pay-per-views, and everything else, they get paid. They get paid very well. I feel like you know? all it would take is like an Anderson Vitor type moment for him yeah. to, to for him to break through. I mean, it could be like just one fight, one moment. It's not so much about learning the language or anything else. I mean, if he had a moment like that yeah. in this fight, you think he could break out? I do. And, and you know, and Anderson had a couple of those moments. Anderson was getting, you know, all the smack talk that Chael did. And then Anderson almost lost the fight, and then he pulls it off with a minute 30 left. And then you hear about the rib injury after and all this other stuff. Then he does the Vitor thing. I mean, he's done a lot of amazing things in his career, which eventually got him open. Not to mention the fact everybody talking about him being the greatest ever for a long time and him holding the number one pound for pound for a long time. And, yes, uh, you know, Henan Burrell is a relatively new champion who's going to, you know, face a lot of adversity over the next several years. But uh, I love how hungry – and determined and and, and, and and how this guy comes out to finish. And there's just a lot of things that I really like about him. And basically all I'm saying is I think he could be that guy. And, and he hasn't been beaten in, in almost 10 years. I mean, it's, it's debatable, but in your Here's opinion. Here's the fun thing. Here's the fun thing, and I was talking about this yesterday. The fun thing about being a fight fan is everybody's a fucking expert. Everybody's an expert. Talk to anybody about fighting, and everybody knows something about fighting, and everybody's going to have their own opinion. Now, let's, let's start a conversation about cricket. I'm out. I have no idea. I don't know anything about cricket and never will. So that's, what I, that's my point. Everybody's, everybody is an expert and everybody's going to have an opinion. Uh, Showdown Joe was in yesterday, and we were debating the pound for pound, and he thinks the number one pound for pound is John Jones. Um, and I, I think it's Hannon Burrell, but he made a very good point in, in, in John Jones' selection, which I have been on the fence with John Jones, and I mean, after his last fight, I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy's so good, he's so talented and so unbelievable. And what Showdown Joe said yesterday is, well, he's beat more more ex champions. He's beat more guys who have held world titles. Very good point. Yeah, what but there aren't any ex champions other than Dominic and Ben Wait, so how can you make that argument? It's pal, so and that's mine, <laughs> and that's mine. I, I agree. So, what tips it for you, Dana? Is it his efficiency, or what is it? No, because exactly? I, I believe that, um, and you guys know this too. I don't care who you are. I don't care how talented you are. Every day somebody wakes up and goes, fuck, today's not my day. Everybody has that day where it's not their day. And in this sport, anything can go wrong. You can get caught in a bad position. One, and you can end up facing a guy who isn't necessarily the most talented guy on earth, but he hits like a truck. Or you can fight the guy who's just an unbelievable submission guy. Or you could fight anything can happen. It hasn't happened to him in almost 10 years. There's just something to that. And not only, um, you know, that being said, 
uh, to get up for every fight. To get up for every fight and to go in there and perform and to, to look the way he just looked at Dillashaw when they, when they squared off. There's so much more that goes into being a fighter. The mentality, he'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. You call him and, and there's no hesitation. There's no, oh, I don't want to fight this guy today and I don't want to fight that guy tomorrow. He'll fucking fight anybody, anywhere, anytime that we put in front of him and he does that every time. So there's just so much more that goes into being. And if you look at what the pound for pound really means, it means that if everybody was the same size, who would come out the winner? And I just think that's Hannah Burrell right now. And he washes his own clothes. Do you think that there's also maybe just a, he's got a slight extra challenge in the fact that he's a lighter weight class just to the casual fan? You know that age old thing about. I don't care about the casual fan. I'm talking about hardcore fight people. But, Who's but, the best? I'm Who's the saying, pound for pound guy? No, I, I'm just saying as far as the lighter weight classes go, this, even in boxing, that's always been a challenge. You well, know? well, the lighter weight classes have kept boxing alive yeah. uh, for the last 15 years. It's true. It just seems like sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to get noticed. Yeah. I'm just saying. If you I, I just, I think it takes, anyway. I mean, we could say the same thing about the 170 pound division. I mean, George St. Pierre was a big star. Hughes was before him, but all the other guys, you know, it becomes a lot of white noise. The, 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 the division has never been more exciting than it is now. It's super exciting. We'll see who can break out and be the next star there. And even at 185 pounds, Anderson Silva had a long time. But at that point, the welterweight guys were some of the lighter guys. It just seems like maybe, you know, as we get further and further down in weight, you're obviously, you know, wanting to... If, if you tell me, flywood. if you tell me, listen, I don't like watching 145-pounders. I just, I'm not into it. You're not a fight fan. You're, you're, a, you're a fringe guy who will sometimes... I'll give you an example. Um, I, I guess NASCAR. I'm not an avid NASCAR watcher you know if i'm stumbling through and i see it I'll, I'll watch it for a little while or you know i'm not what you would call a hardcore but if something big was going on and like there was something to, i might jump in and watch a nascar event right those are the kind of people that say they don't want to watch 135 pounders fight or 145 pounders or mighty mouse who is one of the one of the best in the world too so it's just you're never going to win that argument with a person who isn't really a hardcore fight fan when you look at this streak that Barrow is on. Is it uh, comparable? And I know I'm reaching here, but I mean, it, do you look at it like like uh, DiMaggio, the 56 game streak? I mean, yeah, it's something that like he's going to do. I look at it like that. I look at it like Floyd. Um, you know, Floyd hasn't been beaten 17 years. You know, and you can you can criticize Floyd up and down, and and I hear it every day too. You know, and I take my shots at boxing every once in a while because I, I say what I feel in my opinion on the sport sometimes. But the one thing that you can't deny, Floyd has got up out of bed on Saturday morning and gone in there and beat everybody he's ever faced and he's done it for 17 years. It's a big deal. It's, it's, it's very hard to do. Do you, do you think with Floyd, just, just on this point, you know George steps aside and you get an exciting, you get the wild west of the welterweight division. When Floyd goes, there's a load of guys stacking up there. Do you think that'll be very exciting? The most exciting division in boxing? It could be. It could be. We'll see. David, do you subscribe to the, uh, the notion that it takes two to tango. You know, Ali and Frazier elevated each other. Chael helped elevate Anderson. And maybe Burrell hasn't had someone to help elevate him. And if he gets into a war, if he has a rival, look at Jones and Gustafson. Do you think maybe that's what's missing with him? Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, he hasn't, it's like I said, he's, he's, he's a relatively new champion. He's held the belt, the, you know, he's on his fourth title defense. Um, yeah. Do you think that person could be Dominic Cruz? And when do you expect him back? I don't know. You know, Dominic is, I don't know, or Dominic. Do you think that Dominic Cruz could be the guy to really give an Ember Al a, a huge fight? I don't know. If you look at, here's the problem with Dom. He's been out for a long time. Um, there was a huge rivalry between him and Uriah Faber where they went, and you see what Parab did to Uriah Faber in the last fight. You know, whether you think it was stopped early or not, he did that to Uriah Faber. Aldo didn't do that to Uriah Faber. You know what I mean? Pretty impressive. What do you think? Um, and Faber, when he did that to Faber, Faber had never looked better. He was coming off an unbelievable streak of just looking phenomenal with knockouts and submissions. Sorry, go ahead. Do, 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 you, do you ever picture Jose Aldo? I know we've seen them sparring, but do you ever picture Jose Aldo and Hennem Burrell together? And how do you see those two? And where do they, where do they rank? You know, I, you know me, I'm, I'm a guy that's always like, listen, you're all going to fight. I don't care who's who and who likes who to prove who the best in the world is. But those two are two different weight classes. 
they're not even the same weight class. I see a time where Aldo ends up fighting Pettis probably, and then probably, yeah, Oral would move up or, okay. Thank you. you know. What well, Dominic does come back, and he says, what if he says to you, Dana, I've been studying this Oral guy. I'm, I'm the man. I'm it's the man on. to beat him. It's on. How could I? The last guy on this fucking planet I'm ever going to deny is Dominic Cruz. He's had enough bad news over the last two years. He's not going to get any bad news from me. You haven't had any conversation with him like that, you know? Because mm-hmm. it does seem like, you know, in the headlines when you talk to you and you talk to him, that conversation hasn't taken place yet. I would think. No, and I know that he's trying to get healthy. There's no sense you in having a conversation with him until he's ready to fight. Yeah. You know? Knowing him the way you know him, do you think it's been safe to want to fight for a title? Like no. I wouldn't. It's not even about fighting for a title. The question is this. Do you want to come back and fight Hen and Barrow, your first fight back? After a two-year layoff, that would that that that's the real. Yeah. Would, I mean, would you feel better about him going against Dillashaw than Barrow? I don't care who he wants to fight. I'm just saying personally, if you ask me, I, that's not the guy I'd be running around trying to fight after a two-year layoff. I'd want to get back in there. I'd want to see how I feel, see if I'm a little rusty. You know, work out the kinks. And you always say it's not your job to advise somebody, but you're saying if you I, were nope, advising, I'm not advising anybody. My personal opinion. Dominic Cruz can come in and fight whoever he wants when he comes back. But I think to Brett's point, Brett was saying, knowing Dominic the way you do, do you think he'll think that way? But do do, think- I think that Dominic is definitely a confident, cocky guy. But I, listen, I don't care how mentally tough you are. I'm surprised the guy isn't suicidal already. I don't care how tough you are. The stuff that has happened to this kid is just, it's beyond belief. He, he literally got his lottery ticket ripped up. He was the champion. Coming off the Ultimate Fighter, going into the uh, into the uh, Chael Anderson fight, and he gets a piece of pay per view. That was a big payday. That was the payday of a lifetime for him, and he had to miss it. You've spoken to Eric Del Fierro about it at all? Because uh, I haven't kind t- of said recently that they are definitely easing him back gently. Because yeah. when they, w- believe me, when it's time, they'll call me and we'll talk and we'll make a plan. Yeah. But there's no sense in talking about it until he's ready to fight. On the flip side, from your estimation, where, where you sit, are you surprised that Alpha Male, given their success, are parting ways with uh, Bang Ludwig? Because I knew you were, you were kind of you know, very uh, complimentary of him. And Well, you know, if you look at a guy like Bang, you know, um, he's been very successful with them. He was, he, he was a successful fighter, and obviously he's a really great coach. You know, you start looking at – well, maybe I should go out and open my own gym. And, you know, everybody looks for bigger and better things. You can never fault a guy for wanting to better his situation. And, and, and you know, plus I'm sure he wants to get back to Colorado, too. That's where he's from. Do you think that they're they're at risk of becoming somewhat of a, a Buffalo Bills type of situation, the alpha male guys? They keep making it to the championship match, but they, they keep faltering. Do you think that there's more pressure in some ways on, on the, like with Mendez coming up and Dillashaw here and Faber yeah. just had his opportunity and Benavidez just have, had his opportunity? Do you feel like there's that kind of pressure on them right now? Um, I don't I don't know. I think that every guy, um, I, I love the I love the I love that camp. I love the mindset of those guys too. I was watching. You know, we do that. Why well, can't I remember this fucking show? The show that we do where we did like the the the, the rewind of uh, flashback. yeah flashback fight flashback. Thank you. Um, I just watched the one today for their first fight, uh, for, uh, um, Mighty Mouse and, uh, Benavidez. And, and it's so good. It's like, like the whole team rallies around him and they're, they're calling him champ. Like he's going to be the champ today. He's like, I'm a normal man now, but in a few hours, I'm going to be the champ of the world and stuff like that. Um, they got a really cool camp with a lot of cool guys. Um, what I was shocked was that he had a shirt on today. They never wear shirts. But <laughs> other than that, nothing else shocked me. I, I, I like those guys. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, I wanted to make like my video blog on steroids. You know, I wanted I wanted to see what I what I've been doing over the last several years was all the stuff that goes on the night of the show. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to pull the whole week of the fight together in just a blog style show um, leading up to the fight. Yeah. What do you think about him bringing? Yeah, well, you know what's funny chicken. is, I said, you know, because it was easier to start with Henderson and Cormier because they were close. Because this was just an idea I had. I didn't know how the thing was going to work out or how it was going to go. So I said, these two are the easiest. They're the closest. 
So let's start with them. When everybody else gets here, we'll start filming them as they arrive, and we'll start doing this and that. So um, we said, we know how Hendo is. It's probably going to have to be Cormier heavy because Hendo is going to be a dud, right? Right? I mean, everybody knows that. He stole the fucking show. He was, he was awesome. Henderson was awesome uh, leading up to this fight. And not only was, is he, like, completely different with his personality uh, in Embedded, but all the PR staff at the UFC said he was unbelievable this week. Like, he was a, a completely different person. Yeah. Uh, how much more, I mean, when, when you do the, the blogs, it's just, you know, Elliot with the camera. I would imagine this costs a lot more to do, right? You yeah. Have the guy fly out. It's way more expensive than my video blog, right. and it's a lot cheaper than primetime. No, we'll look yeah, but I wasn't even thinking about primetime because primetime's on hiatus right now. We'll come back and do one soon. But this was just, I, 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 I came up with this concept. I wanted to do like my video blog, but from all angles leading up to the week of the fight. And I wanted to see if we could pull it off. Um, and we did. And seem to like it. Which is the primetime? I think we're going to do primetime again for, uh, for Kane Verdoom. Will the embedded cover all the way through, uh, like your vlogs do, up to the fight, back in medicals and everything? Yeah, so it's all still a work in progress. What I'm thinking about doing is we will do embedded leading up to the fight, and then you'll see my video blog after the fight, just like it always was. So about how many episodes do you imagine for each, uh, leading up to each pay-per-view of Every embedded? Day. The stuff is real time. I mean, stuff, the embedded that will go out today happened yesterday and last night, so... Does that prove to be kind of a cost-effective alternative to doing? So obviously, you can't do prime time for every fight card. I mean, the embedded show looks incredibly high quality, and you're just saying yourself that it's kind of in that middle level between right. your your uh, first-person video blog and and prime time. Seems like that's a real happy medium for most budgeters. So. Yeah, yeah. It was just an idea. It was a concept that I wanted to try. I thought about it. I came up with the concept. Our creative guys came up with the name Embedded, and then um, we did it, and, and people seemed to like it, and, and, and the thing keeps, keeps getting some steam, so the, I think the next one will be even bigger, because the next one will be following Ronda, and, uh, and, 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 and Weidman, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, Machida, and, you know, that whole, Vanderlei, and, and, and Chael, and Sure, Chael will be boring, you know. Uh -huh. We're going to eventually find out that what makes prime time expensive is Henry Rollins voicing it over. Oh, hell no. No. <laughs> hell no. That isn't even close to what makes that expensive. What makes that so expensive is you have to hire a – this is a full production uh, following both these guys, and then you have to get it and edit and edit it overnight. Like, you know, it's, it's a television show. It's a television show that airs on television, a 30-minute show – Last night, yesterday's episode of Embedded was five minutes. You know what I mean? So not not only do you have to uh, you have to do all the work shooting it, you know, flying everybody up there, shooting it, the, et cetera, et cetera, then editing it, turning it around in, in a in a really good quality television show in twenty four hours. Along those lines, between the, the press event today and and the press conference tomorrow, which is not only promoting UFC one seventy five but the Ultimate Fighter finale. That workload, that's promoting three major cards in 24 hours. That's a hell of a workload even for you. Can you take us kind of behind the scenes for a second talking about keeping all those balls in the air and making sure everything gets proper attention? You know what? Putting on events for us now is like, I mean, this is what we do. Back in the old days when we were doing five, this would have killed us. We would have been dead. This is this is what we do now. This is, it's, it's easy. It's easy for us now. You've made a lot of announcements for the UFC on Fox 12 card, but yet it has no main event. I was just curious if there was any main event to announce for that yet. No. San Jose, July no. 26th. They're, yeah, they're terrorizing me, too. we got to get that done because we need artwork done for that thing. I was, <laughs> I was getting yelled at yesterday by uh, one of the girls who works for us. There it is. Is Jones Gustafson still the fight? Or are you maybe waiting to see what happens this weekend? Um, is that still the fight for what? The next fight for Jones, I mean, is that the fight? I oh, mean, yeah, no, that's the Like, there's no chance that Cormier could come in and, you know, have a have the performance of a lifetime, flatten Dan Henderson in the first round, get on the mic, call out John Jones, and Gustafson, we say, you know? Gustafson deserves that fight. He, 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 you know, that fight was razor thin. Um, 
it was an amazing fight. He's he fought another fight. Jones fought. You know, it, it's time for that fight. Is there you, know, you had mentioned before that maybe it could happen in Sweden? Where are you at on that? Could it still happen in Sweden, or have you decided it's going to be a, a, a Las Vegas show or a local show? I should say, a domestic show. Right. Um, you have to watch him bet it today. Well, they, yeah, all the shit that went down today in the office. Oh, okay. Yeah. So both Hendo and Cody have said that they will they're next for Jones if he gets back to stop. Do you agree with that? Hendo, I mean, obviously, if Hendo pulls off this upset, it's huge. Huge. He pulls off the upset against Shogun. Um, he pulls off a huge upset against uh, uh, Cormier. We'll see. Gustafsson's next, and then we'll... He said he was told that if he takes this fight, he gets a title shot. Yeah? That's the reason why he took it. Yeah, maybe he was. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're not saying that's 100%. Maybe I lied to him. I'm kidding. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's just it's just stupid to talk about now, because he's fighting Gustafsson. I mean, that, that fight's not going to happen until fall, and, you know, this fight's happening tonight. He's still got to get through that fight. Then we see where he's at. You know, who, who's to say that that Cormier or Henderson, whoever wins this fight tonight, doesn't want to fight one more time before we'll see. We'll see what happens. Or if they get hurt, I mean, anything could happen. So talking about what's happening after this guy fights this guy, I just I hate doing it. I hate doing it as bad as I hate talking about the fights after the fight. <laughs> Thank you. Penn coming back. That's a pretty cool deal. I mean, the what? Did you BJ Penn. Oh, BJ Penn. Yeah. Yeah, BJ's a unique guy, always has been. You know, he's been, uh, literally been a staple in this company since the day we bought the company. I mean, he was one of the first guys that, that Lorenzo and I made the decision to bring in as a fighter. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've had my, my moments with BJ. You know, BJ's a nutty guy. Um, but unlike the other guys that I've had my moments with, BJ's a good kid and you can, you can work it out with him. Um, and, there isn't too much I'd say no to him. Before. He, he called and asked for this opportunity. I called Frankie. I said, I, I didn't say, I said, let me call and ask Frankie. And Frankie gave him the opportunity. So. Dana, um, speaking of guys you've had moments with, Tito Ortiz said he wanted to be taken out of the UFC Hall of Fame after his fight on Saturday. Is that anything you'd advise him on? Does anybody really <laughs> give a shit what Tito wants? You know, good for Tito. Let him stay over and Viacom MMA and make some money and try to stay relevant. And, you know, uh, I don't care what Tito wants. So he stays in the UFC Hall of Fame. I don't care. I don't care. You know, has the Hall of Fame become almost a headache? You know, no. because it's a cool no. idea. All sports have it. But when I ask fighters about it, hey, who do you think should go in there? I don't even know who the hell thinks. Right. Right. You know, right. For you, it's just, uh, no, it's just sort of a way to to honor the guys who have you know who have been here. Uh, and, and really the way that we've done it is guys who've been here since since we've owned it, you know, other than uh, Coleman and Hoist, obviously. But, uh, you know, everybody's honored. And, you know, Tito was all pumped up, you know, the day he went in. Showed up with his white suit and his white shirt, white tie. So speaking of those uh, Hall of Famers, what about Ken Shamrock and uh, the recent truce you two have had? Yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're best friends now. And, <laughs> uh, I actually, I'll be honest, you know, I respect the fact that Ken reached out and, uh, yeah. <coughs> to squash it, yeah. I was out, had a couple drinks in LA and, uh, guy asked me a question about him and I said, who gives a shit what he thinks? And, uh, and then TMZ put it out there and then. They asked him for a statement. He said, I want to talk to him and I want to squash this whole thing. I want to, I want to you know, I want to apologize and, and, uh, and make up. I called him. Yeah. About 40 minutes. Well, it started off a little heated. You know, we both have different opinions on, on uh, the way things went down. And, uh, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, he wanted to, he wanted to end it, and I'm fine with that. 
I'm not as hard to deal with as everybody thinks I am. I, I can't ever see that happening. I honestly can't ever see that happening. And, and at the end of the day, Frank Shamrock and I never really had a relationship, you know, whereas Ken and I did, or I felt we did. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but Frank and I have never had a relationship. He's too far off the reservation. Uh, now they have all your uh, together, the public memory, what are your thoughts about it? Now they have what? <coughs> yeah, no. I said it at the press conference down there, and I'll say it again now. I knew that this season's fights were going to be awesome. The first fight is, is a good fight. These, these guys are coming in and doing exactly what I said Latinos do. And the first day that I went in there, eight of these guys, no habla, nothing, okay? The other Raider, meh. and I was talking. They didn't understand one word I was saying. But you should see how fired up these guys were just to be there. And it, it's it's really it, this is going to be a very fun season. I'm not missing shit this season. I'm I'm at every fight. I'm rearranging my schedule to make sure that I'm there for everyone. I'm not missing one of these this season. And one, one more question about that. Uh, you just signed uh, a little bit ago on a black a black a black a we're, we're going, we're going crazy in Mexico, man. We're, yeah, he was wrong. And, and a lot of other guys in Mexico that didn't think they were going to be in the UFC were wrong too. We're going crazy down there. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting. I've been waiting for it for a long time and it's all happening now. And everything that I thought is coming true. Thank you. Talks kind of died down a little bit, but I hadn't seen you since then. In retrospect, do you have any regrets the way that was handled? Like with Nate Diaz, especially taking him off the rankings, it seemed like a an emotional decision, you know? Like, mm -hmm. not I don't want to say retribution, but just kind of a well, you're not. I like fights Nate Diaz. I like Nate Diaz. Yeah. So there's no retribution there. Um, you know, it, it, it's like Nick. Nick's off. Nick retired. Nick's off. Um, how about TJ Grant? Nobody's talking about taking TJ off. He was next in line for a title shot. Right. He's off, and. Nate Diaz is off. Nate Diaz, you know, doesn't look like he's going to be fighting anytime soon. Uh, these rankings are there for these fighters to get ranked, to get title shots. Why would you leave a guy in the rankings that's that's not fighting in an act? Well, I guess everybody points to, like, Dominic Cruz is still on there. Well, like, top 10. Is Dominic Cruz in the top 10? Sure, but so is Nate Diaz. I think he's 11. Yeah, I think he's nine. Was he? Yeah, last time I looked, he was 11. And, you know, that top 10 spot... Um, we eventually, we eventually, actually, Dominic Cruz is the reason is the reason I started doing it. I let Dominic Cruz stay on there the entire time. He was like ranked number one the entire time for the last two years. It's probably within the last three or four months that he's fallen out of the, you know, out of the top. You know, at one point he was out of the top ten. He's back in now. I didn't notice, but um, that was really the thing that made me decide I can't do this again. I can't. I was as good as I could be to Dominic, you know, for this long, in many ways, tons of ways. Um, and, you know, th these guys aren't, aren't going to take up these spots that these other guys who are actively fighting, it's just not fair. You feel like there needs Listen, to be maybe some kind of definition or something, well, six months, day, 12 months, whatever The it day is. Nate Diaz comes back and fights, you guys make the rankings, you put him back in there, and he pops in wherever you guys rank him. And you how is it? Same thing with TJ Grant. And 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 uh, anybody else that I just so it's like transparent and easy to see. Do you think maybe there needs to be a rule like, hey, we'll cut it off at nine months or twelve months? Or Guys, this thing is first of all, when we talk about stuff like this, it's not like baseball. It's been around for fucking hundred years. This 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 is all new shit. You know the rankings. We just started doing the rankings. How long ago was that? A year ago? You know, less than a year ago. Um, so all this stuff is all a work in progress, and and uh, it, it it was in no way a. Uh, uh, retribution to, to Nate Diaz. I said it to you guys 50,000 times. If Nate Diaz doesn't want to fight for the next three years, he doesn't have to fight. You can't force a guy to fight. You can't force a guy to fight. He came in, signed a contract, and was happy about his contract. But it's always the same thing with the Diaz brothers. I didn't know what I was doing, and, and I, don't, I don't know anything about anything. And, you know, I don't know how to do this, and I don't know how to do that. And it's just like, okay. I mean, What's Nick now? Nick's 31, 32, and Nate's a couple years younger than him. I mean, what, what do you do? They're grown men. 
you said last night you'd make Nick versus Matt Brown, which I think is a fight that a lot of people want to see. Obviously, Nick's on the sidelines. Have you reached out? But Nick's retired. You know, Nick is retired. He's made it very clear that he's retired. But my point was that was me responding to Nate saying, I want to fight Matt Brown. I think we'd all like to see that fight. Have you Have you guys reached out? Has anybody he's reached retired. Out he's retired. He's made it very clear he's retired. So you just wait for him to call you, basically? Mm-hmm. We, we kept offering Nick Diaz fights. And Nick said, I'm retired. I don't want to fight. So you he's done, done picking up the phone, basically. When, he, when he's ready to fight, he'll let me know. How about that, Nate? That's my point. Well, you guys, that, that's what everybody doesn't understand. You don't want to fight. Okay, don't fight. You know? But you can't take up a top ten ranking if you're not fighting. Have you had any progress with Nate? Mm-hmm. No. But I got, don't ever think that it's retribution. Like, I'm trying to, no, it's pretty clear. It seems like a knee-jerk reaction. The guys, like, the, this the guys guy. that I don't like, pretty clear. And if it was a knee-jerk reaction, I'd tell you. You know I'd tell you. It's not like I'm going to sit here and go, oh, come on, guys. I, you know. This is the way we run the rankings. We do, you know, it's not, I, I don't dislike Nate Diaz. Never have. I can't see a situation where I ever will. It's just, you know, the guy doesn't want to fight. If he doesn't want to fight, what, how's it any skin off my back if he doesn't want to fight? It doesn't matter. I, I, you know, we got tons of guys that do want to fight. When Nate Diaz is ready to fight, he'll let me know. You know, but they want to jump in strategically and, oh, I'll take this fight. You know, or I'll take that fight at 170, or I'll I'll take a title shot. Give me a title shot, and I'll take the title shot. You won one fight in your last three fights. You don't just jump in and take a title shot, especially with all these guys. You know, I know the Diaz brothers are fun. I like watching them fight, too. I like seeing them, you know, do the thing. And I like I like all that stuff, too. I like all the same things that you and the fans like about the Diaz brothers. But they can't just jump in whenever they want to and, and jump over all these other guys that are active and fighting all the time. So Nick says he's holding out for a title shot. There's just no way that's going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. But a Nick versus a Matt Brown would be a hell of a way to get to a title shot. Sure would. Meet Matt Brown, probably line you up for a title shot. Got any other ideas for Matt? Because those are kind of the two favorites. You know, Nick Diaz and then Nick the Lombard. Yep. Those are a lot of those types of we don't. Yeah. We don't. We'll get it figured out, though. Um, we'll figure it out. No, no, no. He just said it that night after the fight, but no, he, he's I'm sure he's home spending his money. He had a good night that night. Update on Gina? Nothing on Gina. I owe Gina a, a phone call. How about now? Kat Zingano, she's training now and mm-hmm. back to uh, back to work. What do you think about making something for her soon? Yeah, I'm happy um, that she is, uh, you know, mentally back in a, in, a, in a decent place. I wouldn't say good, but at least a place to get back in the gym and start thinking about fighting again. Have you made a decision whether she maintains that number one Yeah, she's number one. She's number so, one. She's probably going to have to take a fight before that. But So she will have, she, she, yeah. she won't walk get back into a title fight, probably have to take one more yeah, fight. Yeah, she'll probably have to take a fight. You know, she's got to make some money. She's got to get get back, let people see her again. Yep. Hey, sorry, back to the Regina thing. So you say you owe her a phone call. Yeah, she called me a couple days ago. What did she want to say? Talk about it. Hope UFC. Right. <laughs> You're just too busy. I don't know. Yeah. She Are left you, me a message and I owe her a phone call. Um, yeah, I did not invite her yet. Yeah. I got Holm? time. Yeah. What about Holly Holm? Yeah. We're, we're talking to her. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's been a very long negotiation for somebody you've never heard of. What changed? Uh... I think I'm not involved. I think that's what changed. Who is? Yeah. Uh, Sean's doing that. Okay. Yeah. What you got to get me out of those. What about GSP? You talked to him more? Lorenzo did a couple days ago. He's doing good. He's all over the place. I saw him at the Clippers game. I went to the Clipper game. He was there. Uh, he was at the Billboard Awards the other night. GSP's having fun. He's been cleared. I haven't seen or heard. Brazil? He, yeah, I haven't talked to him. Would you consider him fighting in Brazil before he yeah. fights in Nevada? Or I'll US? consider him fighting anywhere. Yeah. You know? Wherever he lands, he'll land. And he, Misha's still going to Nevada to get licensed first, regardless of where he was. Yeah, I, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I think it's all going to work out. I'm telling you, the whole Vitor thing, you know, guys know, Vitor drives me nuts, you know? But Vitor has gotten a bad, uh, a bad rap on this whole thing. He's gotten a bad rap. But didn't he bring up some of it on himself by not releasing the, the test results. I mean, I don't think he's brought a lot of negative attention to himself with this whole situation. It seems like he's being secretive. 
Yeah, he's not though. I mean, he's not. I mean, when he showed up in Nevada, the thing that was bad about that is, is he showed up and they're like, "You're on testosterone." Yeah, I'm on testosterone. I mean, everybody knew it. You shouldn't have come to Nevada till you were off it. Just, I, it's just. I'm so glad that TRT is gone. It's just, it's just so much better for the sport. Do you do you see that test result as relevant, like his lawyer says, knowing kind of everything is going absolutely. on? Absolutely, it's absolutely irrelevant. Because I'm telling you right now, we tested the shit out of him before every fight he fought. I told you guys, like, I don't remember at what point it was. I said, believe me, we're going to put, we're going to put him through the ringer with the TRT thing. And we did. And he, he complied to everything he was asked to do. He was tested. He was always within his limits. Vitor Belfort was never cheating, you know? Um, but then it became a thing where, you know, TRT was looked at. When you looked at Vitor and how he fought and how he looked and everything else, you know, there's no doubt about it that TRT, I mean, that's what the stuff was designed to do. Stuff is designed to make a guy my age work like a guy John Jones' age. That's that's what TRT is for. And it worked. It was definitely worked for Vitor. It was supposed to just normalize the levels, though, correct? I mean, it's only supposed to get you to normal levels. So if he was right. over, if he was over when he and took he that test, that's my point. The thing is with Vitor sure Belfort is he was never over his limits right. when he fought. Tested the matter. We're sure that, he wasn't. that that I don't know. You know that I don't know. That, I, mean, I think that's what people are fired up about. That but, nobody but, knows what they're But the point is, here's the thing. Let's say he came into Nevada and his levels were off the charts. He wasn't fighting. He came in here to talk about getting licensed, and the thing was. Welcome to Nevada. You want to be licensed here. You have to stop taking TRT. As a guy who's not fighting, you can go around and do whatever the hell you want with TRT. Right? I still don't want to get to those elevated levels. Huh? I still don't want to get that elevated levels because that's what you've always said. Yeah. It's it's going high when you're not being tested and then coming it's down. Like, do you guys realize what happens when you go high? When you do when you when you jack yourself up to those type of levels and then you stop taking TRT altogether? I mean it's I mean you can ask any doctor what happens to you. You're, yeah, you're you're done, you're done in every sense of the word, physically, emotionally, mentally, sexually. I mean, everything. You you just you're done. Why did it take him so long to get back? Like, if you see Dan Henderson, he fought in Brazil with TRT mm-hmm. and is fighting right now without TRT. Yeah, I know. All these guys are. So is Chael. Why you do know? you think he's taking so long to get back? I don't know. So I don't know what he's doing. I I honestly have not talked that the handling of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Is Vitor Belfort's problem? It's not my problem. I'm I'm not dealing with it. I'll 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 hear from Vitor when he's got it all taken care of. And he said he said in an interview last week that he had like everything was ready to fight. That's awesome. Good for him. So when you say it's better, are you referring to Keith Kaiser's resignation? What? Uh, what? How they're handling the uh, TRT? And- no, no. I'm saying I'm saying it's better that it's gone. Yeah, the TRT is gone, not Kaiser. <laughs> Just waiting on him to call you and let you know that it's okay. How mm-hmm. are you going to know like, that he can fight? You have to wait for Nevada. To whenever, fight? whenever he's ready. But how are you going to know that he's going to call you or Nevada? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't care. That's up to Vitor. Vitor's going to have to handle his stuff when he's ready to come back. He'll get Nevada situated, and you know. So you're not offering him anything until he has a license to fight Nevada, basically. Yeah, you guys are more. You guys were more concerned when Vitor was on TRT and what's Vitor doing? And now Vitor's not here and you guys are all, where's Vitor? When's Vitor? I don't know. When Vitor gets gets situated, he'll come back. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, Mendez is a little beast. I, I think that's a fun fight. Uh, hopefully it goes longer than the first one did, you know? <laughs> The episode of The Ultimate Fighter finally aired, so you can talk about it, right? Yeah. Uh, what a bizarre situation. Yeah, what would you guys think of that? I mean, I was there. I lived it. I, I just, I'd rather hear feedback then. I mean, you heard everything I had to say about well, it. Well, I struggled to understand where somebody came up with the idea that it's okay to just circle a name. Like, where was that in the rule book? Is that crazy? Yeah. Why take points away? Why have a referee? Why have judges judge the fight, score the fight while it's happening if you go, who do you guys think won the fight? Well, I mean, is this some, is, and how about this? How about this? When you ask, who do you think won the fight, and you're a judge, I would have to say, well, when I think about it, and if I follow the rules, my my colleague, the referee, said that that was an illegal blow, so he lost the point. I guess I would have to say this guy won the fight, right? 
it's just, it's just, it, it was crazy. I was there that day. So that fight, the fights always happen at four o'clock. I was there when it was dark. It was dark before I left there. It was like 930 at night. It was, that was so crazy. And then how about like BJ Penn's team? He's like, get out of here. Jump in the van and go back to the house before they realize how stupid this is. Well, I mean, is there any kind of special stipulation? Like I thought maybe, maybe there's a special stipulation in the tough agreements because you can't have a draw that if there's a draw, the judge is expected to determine a winner. I mean, is that anything that you guys write into the contract or the exhibition bout agreements or anything like that? Yeah. So let's say, okay. If at the end of the second round, the judges declare it a draw, we go to sudden victory. If that round's a draw, you do one more round. That's how it's Guys keep fighting that's, until there's a winner. Okay. I mean, that's the way it should work. But at the end of the day, the judges, I mean, they have to pick it. And, and, and again, I said this last night on Fox. I mean, the, the, the bigger problem and the bigger issue here was that Mazzagotti is such a bad referee. You know, nothing personal against the guy. I don't know him. I have no... My, my only bad feelings toward Mazzagotti is that he doesn't belong in there um, with, with these big fights. He just doesn't belong there. He has a lot of work to do to become a legit referee. And, uh, you know, there's other guys There's other guys that are going to make mistakes, whether it's your, you know, I, you know how I feel about Herb Dean. I think he's the best. Um, but whether you have another seasoned guy in there like a John McCarthy or any of these other guys, the difference is when those type of people are in there, you feel like somebody has control of the fight. There's control inside there. When Mazagati's in there, it is a fucking you don't know what's gonna happen. It's 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 craziness. It's a circus. The guy never has control of the fight. And there's times when I look at him in there, you know, because he drives me so crazy. There's times I look at him and he's just like I'm like, is that dude doing his grocery list right now? He's thinking about when this fight's over, I gotta go pick up some milk, I gotta get some eggs. All the wife, see what she needs. I mean, that's what the guy, he has that look on his face sometimes. And that it's just, he doesn't know what's going on. You said last night that you said if there's a positive, you think that was the moment that things kind of changed with Nevada, that it helped affect change. Are you saying that you think that's the final straw that, that changed the uh, executive director position? Are you saying an overriding attitude or what changed? Yeah, I think that, I think that, uh, that the higher ups saw that the, you know, it wasn't just that moment, but it was, it was the Pacquiao fight before that. There was a laundry list of things that kept occurring in, in fights in Nevada. And, you know, yeah, that was, that was, that was the last one. Was that the No, it was a month. Tell me about that. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Oh, there's no doubt. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It was just all that shit that kept piling on. And then, you know, you guys see the fights that everybody sees, and, and, and I go crazy. But I'm dealing with all this other shit, too, that, that you guys hadn't seen till till recently. For that matter. But that's what used to drive me crazy. I'm sorry. The other thing that would drive me crazy is Mazzagotti would make all these mistakes, right? And there he is again. How the fuck is this guy here again after what just happened the other day? There has to be penalties. There has to be, you know, when you fuck up at work big time, there's penalties. There's, you know, you get sent over here, or you're on probation, or you're this, or you're that. You can't continue to destroy people's lives and to make these bad decisions. And listen, I was not crazy about the way that kid fought. He was laying on the guy. At least the Zapata kid was trying to win the fight and actually fight, you know? Um... You know, and after that air blast, I saw all the wrestling guys coming out and going, ah, fuck you, and, you know, telling me on Twitter, you know, like, this isn't wrestling, guys, okay? This isn't a wrestling tournament. It's a fight. Well, this is a fighting organization. We want guys to fight. The bottle was actually trying to fight. So, you know, for me personally, you know, with the UFC, I was happy to see this guy win because he's actually fighting. But I honestly think the other guy should have won, as did even, you know, even Zapata knew. With it. On the fourth round, you're, you should have won the fight. You can't, you can't lose the fight in one round fight and win. Right, yeah, but just based on how the scorecard came out, two judges scored a draw and one scored a victory, so that makes it a No, it was the. It was, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. No, 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 no. This is the way I look at that too. If you're in a, if you're in a, in a, in a sudden victory round, 
right? And you have three judges. And one judge says this guy won, and the other two, you know, call it a draw. You give it to the guy that the judges say won the fight. I would do the opposite. If one judge thought that guy won the fight, I think he should have won the fight. But what's even crazier is, right, if one guy says you're in a sudden victory round, there has to be a decision in this round no matter what, and one judge says, I think this guy won, and the other one said, well, I think it's a draw, I would give it to the guy that the one judge picked and thought won. But what's crazy is then you go back and you say, well, who do you think won the fight? We think that guy won the fight. Then how do we end up here anyway? You know, it's crazy. And for the commission would even allow a fourth round. So if there's a sanction for only three rounds, yeah. that could be the problem. Is that is that you can? Well, no. I mean, the, it's three. not even that it's sanctioned for three rounds. You have to come up with a winner. There absolutely has to be a winner. So the way you would look at it, and, and if you didn't want to go to a fourth round because of red tape or whatever you think the, the, the answer is, one, one judge said this guy won the fight. The other two didn't have a decision. you got to go with the guy who has a decision, in my opinion. And for that matter, do you think it's time to maybe look at the unified rules and amend them in any way? Because damage currently really isn't a category. Like we have aggression, control. Do you feel that it's time to revisit those? No, I don't think that the unified rules need to be revisited. I just think that there needs to be a much better job at educating officials, and, and that's happening now. I'm really happy with where we're at now. Now, um, you know, one of the athletic commissioners, Cisco, he takes everybody in after fights, and they review tapes. They look at what was done right. They look at what was done wrong. And, and uh, you know, I, I honestly couldn't be happier with the direction the bat is going in now. Every time there's a judging controversy, people call in to my show, and they, they always ask the same question. Where do these judges come from? So then you start telling the story about state athletic commission, et cetera. You must get asked that question all the time. And when you don't have 45 minutes to rant on it. No, what I get is I get you crooked son of a bitch. You fixed that fight. That's what I get. Um, like if you don't like the judges, fire them and hire new ones. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I get from, uh, from but, dummies that, that, that watch the show. But how do you explain it to them? You know, what's your sort of layman's explanation when somebody asks that question? Where do these judges come from? How do you explain it? To them? Yeah. Well, for over the last several years, a lot of these judges have come from boxing. And I think that, um, you know, th these guys are looking at getting more. What, let me ask you a question, you guys. What makes Herb Dean the best referee in the sport? What makes him the best? I think it's decisiveness. I think it's split second. He knows exactly what's going on. He's been in an arm bar. He's been choked. He's been here. He's been that. Uh, you know, he's done everything. Herb Dean is actually uh, trains in it and, and does everything and knows the sport. That's the difference between – a Herb Dean and a Mazzagotti and, and a lot of the other guys. Um, that's why he's so good, and that's why he's the best referee in the business. John McCarthy, too. John McCarthy, you know, has done it. He's, he's, he's fought. He's, he's uh, you know, he, he's done jujitsu, you know, for many, many years. The difference is, is awareness, knowledge, knowing what's going on, knowing when a guy is in a certain position. Um, yeah. I I was a referee in boxing. I did ref boxing. I don't know. Nobody was crying about me. Nobody was yelling and screaming and you know telling me not to ref any more fights. So, um, you know, uh, and and I don't know if any of you boxing guys know Mitch Halpern or remember Mitch Halpern, um, but but that, that's who I trained under. I trained under Mitch Halpern. You know what that guy did? He was already considered the best referee in boxing at the time. Okay. He had a he had a job and a, every lunch break, and that's back when Las Vegas was cracking. There was seven, eight, ten boxing gyms in town, and it was the who's who, you know, sparring, getting ready for fights. Mitch Halpern would go there on his lunch break and ref the sparring, move around, look for things, tell the guys to break, and he was already considered the best referee on the planet. And uh, you know, yeah, I learned everything from that. Thank you. I don't know. Um, I would like to think I would. I mean, I, I think most of the time. There's been times though where I've walked into the press conference and we've uh, we've disagreed. You know, there's been whether it was you, 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 whoever. We've had our disagreements, um, and that's going to happen. That's absolutely positively normal in the fight business. The ones that that are that are that are bad are the ones that everybody's like. Are you are you kidding me? How is this possible? You know. David, the uh, the 
deadline for New York is uh, next month. You think it'll happen? So I'm, not, I'm not answering any New York questions. I, it, it, who knows with New York? I would weigh on the side of no. <laughs> now you're just cautiously pessimistic. No, I'm pessimistically pessimistic no, about New York. No signs, nothing, no, no tipping their hand. No. I would say no. We'll show. give it a shot. If they would have lost the show, that would have been four in a row. Do you think you would have been done after that? I don't know. Um, I don't know. It would have had to happen first. Maybe he would have retired. What are rumors going on about something that happened with uh, Ali Bogatinov? Um, at his camp, can you confirm that something happened with him? Yeah, something happened. Yeah, I'd rather not. It's just it's not important. It's not worth it. Yep. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Glover and Rashad. What happened? No, Glover's hurt. Glover's going to be out for a while. Yeah. November 8th, 2013. Oh, it was the week before? Yeah, the week before. Yeah, yeah. I was at the end of my rope before that. What's the war that you got last weekend, and why were you wearing a tuxedo? It seemed very out of character. I uh, I received the Sports Visionary Award from... Uh, from Sports Spectacular. It's a big awards event that they do in, uh, in L.A. every year for, for sports. Um, and uh, I don't know. I decided to wear a tuxedo. Me and one other guy had a tuxedo on. And the other guy that had a tuxedo on, um, Jim Hill and uh, who else? Jim Hill and uh, um, uh, the, it was the basketball player that used to be on Best Damn Sports Show. Um, Sally, they lied to him and said they were wearing tuxedos, so that's why he wore a tuxedo. So is this a big deal to you? It seemed from that brief clip like you were very humbled by this. Yeah, you know this is a big award show that you know everybody was there. I mean, everybody. There were so many people there from sports, um, and all the networks were there. And uh, you know they do this thing every year, and to finally be, you know, for us to be there amongst all the other sports, and you know, it was it was a big night, and. Uh, who votes on this, or who's the one? Is there a committee? I have no idea. I have no idea. Fox, Fox called me and said, "Hey, these guys are these guys. Are only, there were only three awards that night, um, and they said these guys are honoring you. It's a big deal here in Los Angeles. Um, you know, you should go." By the way, don't worry about all those big transparent plastic bags. We all use them. You know that. Let me tell you what the point of that was. The point is, I have a shave kit. And the question was, where's my shave kit? You know? Every event we go to, there's something missing somewhere. Elliot. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not that the shave kit's like it's, there's always something missing. There's always a piece of the puzzle gone. Always. Yeah. That ain't happening. Um I'll show up to a I show up to the FX shoot the shoots commercial. And I have like a, uh, I have a blue suit with a black shirt. <laughs> yeah, that's my stylist right there. Yeah. You ran into George. I didn't. Oh, you said you didn't. I was sitting on this side of the court, and he was over on the other side of the court. I saw him over there. No. No. Ron is extremely popular. Um, with 115 pound women coming in. Is this a great opportunity to get some significant growth out of the women's side of the sport, yeah. especially in the U.S.? The growth uh, on the women's side of the sport has been astronomical. It's what we've done with women in combat sports has never been done in the history of combat sports. The growth is is unbelievable, and I think that these women, you know. You guys all know the women that are coming. They're all they have amazing personalities. Um, they're talented, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. The, now they've got a finalist cast. Really happy. I have 
now. I, I think it's going to be a long time before that happens. Think about when we first bought this company, there wasn't a 155 pound division. Um, you know, the whole going back to Tito thing when Tito was freaking out about, they took me off the thing and didn't take him off anything. Him and Chuck's fights at that time were middleweight. They weren't light heavyweight fights. They were middleweight fights. They weren't at 205. They were at 199 pounds. Um, you know, but it took a long time for all of that to really come together. And, and I think it's going to be a long time before we add more women's weight classes too. These two weight classes will be perfect for a while. Because the other thing is you got to have, you got to have enough talent to fill those divisions. What are you going to do next week with the two shows? Are you going to be at either show or are you staying back <clears throat> at that? You know, I'll be in shows? Germany. I'm going to Berlin. Okay. Yeah. How are you going to? Because you always say that in Vegas you can oversee a show. Right. So be in Germany. How are you going to oversee Brazil? Yeah. Because uh, I don't know what the time difference is or how these are going to air, but uh, we'll figure it out. It starts like right after Sao Paulo. Yeah, starts yeah. like almost. We'll have the same capabilities. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like in Germany. Oh yeah. Yeah. How do you choose which one you go to? Uh. For this one, um, Gary Cook begged me to come to this one. He's like, dude, I need you out here for this fight. So, I'm going. What he should do with his career, what approach he should take. Corey May said he should brace his, his whole Mayweather, kind of go a whole deal, be a villain. Uh, I'm of the opinion that would probably make you guys a lot of money, make him more money. I know you don't like to interject yourself, but, but do you have an opinion on that? Maybe what you would like to see from Doug? No. As far as John Jones goes, I mean, wherever he goes with his personality and how he is, I mean, that the thing about John Jones and the only thing anybody should care about is how good he looks every time. He gets better every time he fights. He looks so good in that in that Glover to Teixeira fight. And believe me, when I, when I talk to guys like Chuck Liddell who have been with Glover for so long, I mean, Chuck was like, what he did to Glover is very impressive because I know what Glover – who he is and what he's really got and what he's capable of. And the fact that Jones did what he did to him is pretty damn impressive. At least we saw with Anderson early in his career. He loved to go away from him his career. So spoiled. He kind of really strong. That's why he needed to speak for himself. In some ways it's it did, better. though. I mean, w- w- well, that's the thing it's with it's me, it's with Anderson, like I am with Brown now. The things that Anderson Silva used to do, you didn't see anybody do that. You didn't see people do what this guy did. Um... And everybody kept talking about how weak his ground game was, yet, you know, nobody was submitting him, even really good submission guys. And, um, you know, and Anderson had a couple of bad moments. You know, Abu Dhabi was, was horrendous. Um, but I think Anderson Silva's fighting did speak for itself. And, and, and John's, John's is unbelievable. The cast, yes. Yeah. Um, I thought you said cars. The, ca- the cars, yeah. my dear. Um, the, could, I, could you just look into that camera and answer it? Joanne Calderwood. <laughs> that, that camera right there. Uh, sorry. That's a camera? That's a camera. Okay. Um, Joanne That's Calderwood. Coming. Joanne Calderwood, a Scottish girl. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about her, what you thought of her? Um, Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Um, but here's the reality. I don't know a lot about their abilities until I see them fight. I know where these girls are ranked. I know how uh, how uh, people feel about them. We'll see what happens. I'll have a lot more opinions on these girls after I spend six weeks with them. They're 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 very entertaining. They're they're a very entertaining group of women. They're very they are very fired up for this opportunity. Um, it's the way that I look at it's the way that I look at look at uh, at tough uh, tough Latin America. And the way that I look at at, the, at this one is, it's like this is the Ultimate Fighter one for these guys. It's it's like this crop of the best people we could find to go in there and live in the house and compete. And uh, I, I think we're going to find a lot of talent and the personalities are, you know, which obviously everybody here thinks looks and personality are very important in marketing somebody. Well, you're going to be very impressed with uh, that cast. It's one of the things that seems something. Of the sport is every time there's an Olympics now, there could well be women emerging from there that are literally within a couple of years in the UFC or yep. in MMA. Certainly, I mean that's what's happening everywhere, all over the world. Um, you know, all these people 
who are very gifted and athletic that would have played something else or getting into it. Because they will not get paid for it. It's only that's the point. They right. don't have a career if they love that sport. They well, it, it, does, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt. I mean, I, I know Rhonda has her opinions of where the Olympics got her, but um, I, uh, I I never think it's a bad thing to to have a medal. No, but what I'm saying is she never should say the judo. She never have achieved right. what she's achieved. I mean, you know, I mean, Nick Hine, who's fighting in Berlin, knew her. I uh, you know the German debutant in Berlin said, you know, we knew Ronda Rousey as a judo, but she wasn't. Look at the, the layers, the levels. Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 I'm not going to tell that story because I, I, I'll probably get me in trouble. But, yeah. Eh. Yeah. Uh, but Ronda was just at the Cannes Film Festival, and, and it was a big deal to everybody that she showed up to this thing. It was a big deal. A lot of strings were pulled because her, her schedule wouldn't allow it. And a lot of strings were pulled with some heavy hitters from Hollywood to make sure that she was there. Pretty impressive. Believe me, very big outside the sport. Very big. You know, um, it's impressive what she's done in a short amount of time. Do you get a lot of uh, Hollywood offers for cameos that you have to turn down, or not really? <laughs> yeah, more than yeah. I just it's just not my thing. I'm not into it. But yeah, I do. Oh Jesus! I have no idea. <laughs> Some bald guy. <laughs> yeah, he could do it. Who do you think wins, Chris Lytle or Roy Jones, if they box? What's that? Chris Lytle or Roy Jones? Boxing? Yeah, it's me talking about. Are they talking about boxing now? He said that the UFC gave him, uh, you gave him his blessed, uh, your blessing to go out and do it. Lytle said that. Yes. <laughs> Maybe not you specifically. Maybe not you specifically, but the UFC said he spoke to the UFC. I don't know. I, you spoke know. to who? I don't know. The, Give me UFC. I mean, I, 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 so do, UFC? do you not give him your blessing to do it? That's what Ken. That's one of the things that I'll say when me and Ken were, were, were talking the other day. He says I don't even say anything about you. I say stuff about the UFC. Who the fuck do you think you're talking about? You know what I mean? It's like, are you kidding me? But uh, no, I didn't talk. To, but 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 Chris Lytle can do whatever he wants. Yeah, if Chris wants to box with Roy Jones, he can do whatever he wants. He has a shot. Chris Lytle has been a, a, a really good guy his entire career and good to this company. And You know, you know when he was running, I used to I, I tried to help as much as I could when he was running. But running for office, that is. You can pick a winner, though. <clears throat> pick a winner? Yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you, you're talking about boxing. So if you look at <laughs> boxing and you look at how far Chris Lytle went, and you look at boxing, you look at how far Roy Jones went. It's just all our guys think they can box, you know. Chris Lytle actually boxed. He was a boxer, you know. So, so, but you're talking about Roy Jones here. You care how much Roy Jones' skills have declined. He's a guy who went to the Olympics for boxing, got robbed in the Olympics, then came out and look what he did. These guys all think they can box Roy Jones. Now, if you want to make it an MMA fight, he snatches that back quick and chokes him out. Lytle does. Two completely different things. That's why, you know, there was a lot of, first of all, I didn't start the whole uh, Ronda Rousey could beat Floyd Mayweather thing. That didn't start with me. I just supported it and agreed 100%. You take a street fight, Ronda wins that fight and hurts him badly. You, you, you do an MMA fight, same result. Boxing match, Floyd Mayweather chews her up. In a boxing match? Listen, I, I it's hard. I listen, I get it. It's hard for guys to wrap their brains around that one. Rhonda wouldn't beat him; she'd hurt him badly. She would hurt him badly. Guys who don't fight have a very twisted. It's like guys who have never, guys who have never really been involved in fighting before, and they start training. They always want to spar. Let's spar, let's spar. And sparring is never what they thought it was going to be. Never. Because as a man, we think we can all fight and you think that you're tough and you think you could do well. Ronda will hurt you badly. You think Floyd Mayweather has ever been, had his feet kicked out from under him and, and had, and when she walks around at 160, 165 and 165 pounds, all her weight coming down on top of him on the street, on here, on the carpet, I don't give a fuck where it is. She's going to hurt him badly. I've seen her throw big dudes and hurt them. 
Yeah. Boy, he's this tall. He's that big. He weighs 100 and what's he weigh? 135? 147. And he's close to weight. He's close to weight. Ronda weighs more than him. Ronda's. Right, it's true. No, you don't want to see a fight between a man and a woman. But, and I, and in any other situation, I'd be like, eh, not that one, not that one. Rhonda's Rhonda's neck is this big. Her shoulders are this big. And when she grabs onto you, she's not your average woman, and she's mean. Not like she's some sweet little. Okay, yeah, yeah. she's mean. She'll kick the living shit out of me and you and everybody else standing here, whether you like it or not. That's what I was telling. I was, I was on a ESPN radio show the other day at the Clippers game on the Max Kellerman show. And we're out in the street. And I said, and we were talking about that. And guys were like, oh, I'm like, oh, what? I said, she'll clean this whole fucking street out. All of you, every one of you out there, you know, and that, that bums guys out. They can't wrap their brain around that. You can land one big, but listen, how are you going to? Land one big one. Rhonda, you're acting like Rhonda can't shoot. Rhonda can't move. Rhonda can't whatever. That's like saying, let's take a good wrestler, a really good wrestler, and let's put him in a, in a, in a street fight with a guy who, who can punch. Absolutely. That guy might land that one punch, but the way that you shoot and you get inside, once they put their hands on you, you're done. You're done. And you know, I'll take even a wrestler. A wrestler double legs you and slams you on the street. You're done. Oh shit, yes I do. Okay. Don't you think there might be a few Floyd Mayweather ex girlfriends who would like to see that fight? <laughs> Maybe. I think there's a lot of people who would like to see that fight. I think Bruce Willis. And it's and, <laughs> and, and there's no disrespect to Floyd. It's just it's it is what it is. It is what it is. She'll want Rondo whoop a lot of dudes' asses, not just Floyd's. Did you talk to Floyd at all about how, how promising his son is in the song? No, no. Did you even know that he had a son in MMA? No, I had no idea. I didn't know either. Yeah, that's interesting. That's the other thing for regular guys. The first time a regular guy or girl gets kicked in the leg, it's it's a very life changing experience with somebody who knows how to leg kick you. It's over in one kick. You don't want that to ever happen to you again. So deal with it. <laughs> deal with it, Gareth. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yesterday, that uh, Fox Sports One trying to add, add NBA on Saturday nights, and have you thought about or talked to them about what that would do for you guys? Um, no. Those guys are building building their network and doing their thing, and we're just here to help. Today, or was that still in talks? Yeah, it's still in talks. I owe a phone call. I got to go to the Ultimate Fighter for an awesome Hispanic showdown. Yep. All right. Thank you.